start off by uh, going into the textbook and we're gonna start off by doing algebra, all right? Now, I'm not sure how far you guys are into uh, like your math curriculums. I'm not sure how much you guys know. So I'm just gonna go through this somewhat quickly. And if you need me to slow down or if you have a question, always feel free to unmute and just tell me uh, or send me a private message. So I'm gonna start off with a pretty basic problem. This is really just to get a feel. Um, so in the Zoom chat, uh, in the Zoom chat, sorry for the watermark, by the way. It's a unfortunate concession I had to make. Um, just in the Zoom chat, please uh, use the direct message feature. So you only send your answers to me because, you know, don't want other people to steal your answers. And then send me the answer to the first two questions. Um, for reference, we're going to call them questions one and two because it's going to be easier. And once again, oh, I'm going to be rushing through the beginning somewhat quickly because I'm not sure how much you guys know of this. And if you need me to slow down, always uh, feel free to tell me. Great. Looks like we are waiting on Kylie. Uh, yes, Kylie, good job. We're gonna move on in a second. I just need to open one thing up quickly. Uh, All right, we are going to be moving on now. So, first I'd like to ask, um, how did everyone solve this, right? What was your thought process? And uh, feel free to just unmute and tell me what you were thinking. Um, since Lymel is two years older than Angelina, just add by two. Exactly. So that's great. Um, so that is how uh, you would solve it. And that is the correct answer. But we're going to move on to a way of writing this. So it's algebraic. And... Uh, algebra, algebra means um, it's usually just about numbers, and more specifically, it's about numbers when you don't know things. And uh, for example, to solve this problem, to solve this problem, we are going to use a letter actually. So I'm not sure if you guys know this, but in algebra, we use letters very often, and they are used for unknowns, which means things that we do not know. So how old is uh, Lee May? I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. Uh, we're just going to call Lee May's age L because L for Lee May, right? And so we identified from this chart, the pattern, that Lee May minus two equals Angela's age, right? And uh, we can also write this as Angela's age, oops, uh, Angela's age plus two equals Lime's age. And so you can use either of these to solve it. And then you plug in Angela's age, in this case it's 12. So uh, these two equations become 12 plus two equals L and L minus two equals 12 respectively. They're basically they're the same thing. We'll talk about more how you can go from equation to equation later on. But, uh, all you, and then you can solve this for L equals 14 and the answer is Lime equals 14. Uh, her age of course, or his. I actually have no idea what Lima is. Boy or girl. All right. Uh, the second problem is the exact same thing. You just change 12 to 15. Now, uh, now we are going to do some thinking algebraically, right? So if we have Alan, 
and he is eight years old. How old will he be in five years? This is really easy, right? You just add the two numbers. Now, if we ask how old he will be in X years, it's a very similar question, but how does anyone know how we're gonna express the answer to this? How old he will be in X years? There's no need to solve the first one. Just tell me the answer for the sec uh, for 1B because I just we're gonna introduce ourselves to algebra and the different symbols. All right, doesn't look like anyone has the answer, but uh, we have a second one. The way we would put it is if he's eight years, oops. Uh, if he's eight years old, why is it not giving me the pen? That's weird. Okay, if he is eight years old and we subtract X years. Wait, what? Well, well, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't even know. Okay. Uh, if we have eight years old and then in five years, it would be eight plus five. Now, uh, you, you could solve this and get 13, which is the correct answer. However, for B, we would get 8 plus X. And you don't really know what X is. So we're not sure what the answer is, right? We don't have an answer until we know X. So uh, algebra can be used to um, solve questions when you don't really know when something is. And we're going to learn more about uh, how you can simplify it into something that's easy to do. For example, um, if we have... Uh, if we have packets filled with apples, right? I'm just gonna show this here. If we have packets full of apples, um, and we have four apples in each packet, uh, you can see that we can always solve the amount of apples if we know the amount of packets, right? This is just multiplication. If we have six packets, it's four times six. If we have two packets, it's four times two. And so, um, if we do not know the amount of packets, we can write it as four times P. And not only can we write it as four times P, we can actually write it as four P. We do not need a multiplication symbol. Now, this is the first thing I wanna introduce, okay? Um, whenever you see a number next to a letter, uh, the, the number is multiplying the letter, okay? The number is called the coefficient. Um, you don't really need to know that, but just uh, do understand that whenever you see a letter next to a number, it basically means that they're being multiplied together. All right, so moving on, uh, a problem. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'd like everyone to tell me what you got, what you would put as the answer for it's weird. The image isn't going in. Sorry about that. I will. Oh, wait. I was, I was using the wrong paste button. All right. So we're going to solve this problem. Could everyone uh, send me your answers to this? And by the way, um, this problem is worded a bit weirdly. All right. Uh, but when the question says he has X marbles in a bag and then there are five bags and three mar marbles altogether, altogether, we can kind of get rid of this word. I, I don't think it was worded that, and it, mean, it, more, it means more of like there are three marbles left over. It's more of like three marbles left over, right? So we have five bags, each with X in them, and then we have three here. So how would you write this? Could everyone send me the answers in chat? Okay, so the amount of marbles in the bag is indeed 5x, okay? So we seem to have people who have figured that much. However, we also have to account for these marbles, right? So 5x is all of these, but we also have 3 here. So it's 5x plus 3. That would be our answer, okay? And um, if we take 5x plus 3, and I tell you that x equals 7, 
can you tell me what uh, how many marbles he has in total, right? If he has x equals seven, that means uh, he puts x marbles in a bag. That means he puts seven marbles in a bag. If he puts seven marbles in a bag and there are three marbles left over, can you tell me what this final amount of marbles he would have uh, is? Great. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. We all seem to have gotten the hang of that. Um, now we're going to work on some simplification, okay? Now, what that means is that sometimes you will get a problem, okay, and it has an unknown. And we, and we can't actually solve the problem, all right, because we do not know the unknown. However, we can make it easier, so if we ever do know the unknown, we can solve it quickly. For example, uh, this question, simplify uh, 5r minus 2r, okay? Um, we, do, we don't know what r is, so we can't ultimately get the answer. However, we can uh, take 5r minus 2r, and then we can get 3r, right? And so if we do ever know what this is, let's say it's 7, it's r equals 7, then we can quickly solve it to be 21 instead of going... Oh, uh, this is 25, and then this is 14, and then we get 21. That's just so much work, right? We don't want to do this. We want to simplify it so when we do get the, if we ever get this, we can solve it quickly. Okay. And now I'm going to give you a question. Okay. I'd like you to send me the answer for that. on a few more answers and then we can head out. All right, so most people seem to have it. However, we have some answers which are, they've simplified the Ks. They've simplified the Ks. Why, why does this pen just not like me? Okay, thank you. Uh, we simplified the Ks and we got 7K. That would be K. Um, and then we, but you have to also do the numbers, right? So if we want to simplify as much as we can, we simplify this as well, and we get plus three. All right, so whenever we are asked to simplify something, I want you guys to simplify it uh, by, we're going to take each term, and then we're going to uh, group it into a type, okay? And then once we group it into a type, then we can simplify it. For example, let's just cut it up. Let's just cut it up here. Eh, actually, that was bad. Uh, I'm just going to box everything off. First, we can label all of these as a type of term. I'm just going to use colors. Uh, so first of all, we have actual numbers. And then we also have variables of k, all right? And so then we will do it based on the type of variable, because you can't add 5 with 4k. They're, they're like different types. Um, if you've done fractions before, this is as if it was a different denominator. Although in this case, you can't make a... Uh, uh, least common denominator. And now we are going to do a bit of practice. If anyone likes to work uh, on paper or something, this is in practice 1A in the textbook. If you want to do uh, it on paper, yeah. although I assume you guys haven't printed it by now. After I get some answer answers for this, I will post some new problems. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Okay, so just a quick bit of reference. Um, you do you never need to write one. I don't like this color. We, you never have to write one x or well one one anything. You don't have to write one v. You don't have to write one a. You don't have to write one q. I don't know. You don't have to write one at the beginning because we know that x equals one x because one X really just means one times X. And we know one times X is just X, that's just multiplying by one, right? So you, you don't need to put one in front. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that I would prefer it. Okay, if you need to do this, it's okay, but I'd prefer it if you send all your answers in a single message, because that just makes it a lot easier for me to uh, check them, because I'll just show you. Uh, Normally, when you if you send messages all in one group, it'll be like one blah blah blah, two blah blah blah, and then a big bubble around all of it, right? And that's really easy for me to check. But if you but if you write send them one by one, they'll each have like a big bubble around them, and it takes up like the whole screen. As you can see, there's a big difference in the space. So I prefer if you guys send messages in a single batch. Uh, also, we are waiting on a few answers still, so. Um, Okay. I think we can move for now. Oh yeah, I'll post the next problems. Um, this is a lot of space. I'm just trying to get that quickly. All right. Um, just send me the answers to these four questions. Uh. Oh wait, it's a bit cut off. I will. For you, one second. Um. This question says in terms of why, and then this says admission fee. Yeah, this is admission fee, and this is why. Everything else should be, in. yeah, everything else is a complete tool. Now, once you send, yeah, this is just basic algebra. Um, we are going to. Uh, after this, we're probably going to do some stuff in the workbook, and then we are going to move on out of algebra and we uh, into solid geometry.
All right, uh, sorry. Um, just by the way, you should be, uh, your questions should be 6A, uh, 6B, 7A, 7B, 8A, 8B, and 9A. So you should have nine answers in total. Nine answers in total. And just give me that's here so you understand what the questions are. So these are the questions. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, can you see it now? Oh, if, if you mean cut off here, I wrote it here. Uh, it means in terms of why, that's what the question is. There's no part B to number nine. Uh, well, there is, but we're not going to do that right now. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, that's just why, the, by the way, in case you can't see it because it's cut off. So yeah, just nine problems. All right, that's good enough. Uh, we are going to move on now out of algebra onto something else. All right, so let's see, let's see. We are going to, I forgot to sign for that for homework, actually. We are going to go into the textbook now and move on to solid figures. All right, now, uh, this one should be pretty easy. It's just some basic questions. Okay, so for starters, this question, I would like you to tell us uh, to send your answers in the following format, all right? I would like you to send me A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. And this question is question one, this, oh, that's a really bad error, sorry. This question, question one, and this question is question two. So answer it like six times because you have to answer it three times for each one. Got it?
Yeah, so we are on to this now. Uh, and then after this, I need to prepare the next question. Yeah, so uh, this unit's gonna be a lot of just like spatial vision, uh, visualization. You gotta think about what this shape looks like. So it's more, of, I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't say it's not much of a map, it's just that you're gonna have to use this in math, but it's more of just like a spatial thing. Okay, so uh, we are going to spend a second on this. Um, yeah, so the first figure, the correct answers are five, five, two, four, four, five, four. And I'm going to circle mm, underline. These are the answers here. Five and two, four and four, and five and four. Now, I just want to go over why this is because uh, we have a bit of difficulty, right? So first of all, we have, when you look at a shape, right? You got to really think about what it looks like, okay? And so these dashed lines are like lines in the back, okay? So these are lines that you can't really see. In reality, for example, if you saw this shape, uh, well, okay, actually let's just say a cube because I can draw a cube easily. Um, if we actually had a cube, it would be something like this, right? This is how a cube would actually look. But we know a cube does not have three faces. A cube has six faces. So the way we would show that is by we draw is by drawing the vertices. So we're gonna use a dashed line. I'm just gonna use dots because I don't know how that works. Yeah. So we're gonna use this. Um this. And now you can clearly tell there's our face here, right? This face. Our second face over here, our third face on top. But there's a few more. There's the one in the back, which is this one, this face, that's four. And then we have this face, which is five. And then on the bottom, we have this face, which is six, right? Along with our ones in the front. So we have to be sure to count every single face, including the ones that seem hidden. Moving on. Figures the low shifts and solids, which one of the solids is different from the others? Explain why. Now, oh, you can actually, um, you can actually argue somewhat which one's which one's the different one, but there's like one that's more more different than the others. So I'd like you to find that and also explain why. So like, don't just tell me which figure is different. Explain why.
Uh, Ray, that is completely correct. Um, the answer is D because it isn't a prism. Now, I haven't really gone over what a prism is, but I'm gonna go over it now. So, um, all right, so Kylie, that you are correct, it is figure D and you do notice so many triangles, right? However, keep in mind C also actually has triangles on the sides, okay? Now, I'm gonna explain why C is a prism and why D is not. Now, a prism is uh, a shape and, not a shape, sorry. It is a 3D object and it has two flat sides, two flat bases, which are like opposite ends almost. And then you fill it in the middle. So you can almost think of it as something that you can like, um, how do I put this? You can like hold it between your hands symmetrically, right? So for A, uh, A and B are both rectangular prisms, which are very special because they're prisms from every single angle. Um, this side, uh, this side here matches up with the side and back. These two sides are both flat ends and they're connected in the middle. Um, as are these sides here. And as are the sides on the top. Right? The same thing applies to B. B is just like a different version. And for C, there's only one set that you can use. It's this set of triangle here and this triangle here. So a way we can think of a prism, prism is you take any shape. All right. I'm just gonna draw this shape. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, but we can actually move. It's actually not, that's okay. Let's just do this. I can make this into a prism. How am I going to make it into a prism? Well, we're gonna start off by uh, basically elongating it, by stretching it, okay? So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to draw lines out. This is really bad, sorry. I'm not an artist. Okay, and then now we are going to connect it. And then now we are going to draw some dashed lines. All right, so this is really bad actually, but if you, if I ignore all the dashed lines, you might be able to actually tell this is kind of a prism, right? Um, because you have the same thing on both sides, right? And then it's filled in the middle by you kind of stretching it. I'll give a better example. Um, if we take a pentagon shape like this, we stretch it like this. This is a prism. All right, this is a prism. So basically a prism is when you take a shape and you stretch it, okay? And now we are going to talk about some nets. Nets are quite re are related to this and I'm going to start off, by, yeah, start off by showing an example, okay? Um, so I have no question to ask you. I just want to show you. Uh, this is called a net. A net is a 2D object, okay? Um, and you can fold it up, right? You can fold it, as you can see down here, right? This, this thing here. You can fold it into a 3D shape. And now I would like to ask, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of a sh shape, a solid. And I would like everyone to tell me which of these shapes can make that solid. Which of these nets can make the solid? Because we're, try we're trying to achieve the solid at the top. And I want you to tell me which of these nets can achieve that goal. So this shape, uh, we have four sides to this shape, all triangles. And which one can we fold up into that shape? Yeah, so um, most people are giving me an answer, which isn't wrong, right? It's certainly not wrong, but I'd like you to give me both answers, okay? There are two answers which both work, actually. Good job, good job, good job, good job, everyone. Okay, so seems like we got the hang of this, right? Uh, we are going to do another one of this variety. This is kind of the opposite. This time, instead of making a uh, shape with a net, I'm going to give you a net and you're going to make shapes. Wait, 
what am I saying? No, instead of telling you which, and instead of asking which net makes the shape, I'm going to be giving you a net and telling you which shape it makes. All right, that didn't, that's, makes a bit more sense. Waiting for one answer. All right. So, uh, as of now, I'm going to ask you guys to, um, after we finish this, I'm going to give you guys a bit of work. All right. And uh, the thing about this work is, I would like you to, um, how do I put this? Uh, I'm basically gonna give you your homework, okay? But the homework, you're not gonna be able to finish it, but you guys can start it early, right? Um, actually, you might be able to finish it. Probably not, but it is somewhat possible. I don't think so, but you might be able to, so who knows? Um, I'm going to start off by assigning one more question. Um, all right, great. So we're going to be moving back to our algebra because our homework's going to be covering both. And we're going to start off with this whole load of questions. Uh, and then this will be part of your, and so I don't want you to send me the answers in the chat, okay? Um, we're going to be doing something else, actually. Assignment. Yeah, so um, just once you finish the answers, just write it down on a piece of paper because I'm going to be giving you a place uh, to do that in quite a second, in just a second. Would be way I just have to set this whole thing up for you. Where are we gonna get our homework later? Uh, so this is um basically in a sec on the Google Classroom. I'm going to be posting your homework. All right, and the thing of, and so you you guys can start it in class. Um, it's gonna be quite a bit, which is why I'm letting you guys solve do this first. This is gonna be part of your homework, and so if you you technically could just like take a nap for five minutes and then wait till I post the classroom. But I'm just giving you these problems first so you can get a bit of a jump start. Uh, unfortunately, it takes me a bit to post this because it's a bit slow. Um, yeah. So one, this is two one L, one A to L. We did that, we did that. All right, yeah, that's all. Yeah, we don't we don't usually do much in the textbook because textbook is mainly what we do in class. And then you're gonna have so this is all the stuff you have to do in the textbook, but we're gonna have quite a bit to do in the workbook because um the workbook is of course where we work. What a funk of that. Um, yeah. So um just to explain how this works. The homework is going to be due on Friday. It's going to be due on Friday, all right? And uh, just do the homework anytime you want, right? Uh, I don't particularly care. Just have it done by the time. 
and you will get full credit. All right, I need to put some problems. Um, All right, so yeah, Alan, uh, great with the answers, but I will be posting them soon. I'm just a bit slow. I'm so sorry. Exercise one, one to four. And I also want you to do exercise two. Oh, yeah. So you guys can start by going into the workbook and doing exercises one to four. I'm just going to write that down quickly. But this is, you know, going to be part of your homework. Um, an exercise one that looks like a seven. I'd like you to do one to four. You guys can start on that. Uh, once again, all of these, and then I'm writing this down also in the homework assignment. So if you forget this, it'll be on the homework assignment. Don't forget. And then for exercise two, you guys will have. I'll just, yeah, I'll give you all of that just right there. So we have to do exercise one. So there's only four questions? Yeah. Uh, this is not all of your homework. This is just one section. I, uh, you also have all of exercise two and exercise three, which aren't that much, don't worry. Um, mm. And then exercise five, I believe. Because like you might see exercise five all and you'll be like, oh no, that's so much work. But <laughs> don't worry, it's only two questions in exercise five. It's just I don't really know why they don't put it like that. Um yeah, and then all of exercise two and three. Two, three, and five, actually. 